Hello, welcome to He's Hot But Something's Off with me, Jess Joey T. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. I was at the gym today. Most days I'm at the gym. And I just quit halfway through my exercises. It's not that uncommon. You know, after I've been like really at it for the gym for like three weeks, give or take, I noticed that I just need my need to give my body a little bit of a breather. So I do what's called a deload week ish or so where either I don't go to the gym or what usually happens is I still go do some amount of gym and still get some exercise in, but I do half the amount of weights that I usually do. I don't do as many exercises uh, as I usually do, just have like some movement in the joints and have a little bit of exercise. Uh, and usually, well, right now, uh, it's still early in the year. It's still, are we in, is it spring now? Technically, we're still or in a winter. But this is bulking season. So from New Year's until like April or May, usually it's bulking season for me because that's when I'm not going to that many parties. I'm not traveling that much. And uh, yeah, that's when I usually, uh, it's just a good time to bulk and put on some weight uh, if I'm trying to do it that year. And yeah, it's bulking season right now for me. So pushing pretty hard at the gym. But, you know, every once in a while, I got to give my body a little bit of a break. And yeah, listening to my body is something that it's um, kind of straightforward, but not as easy as it sounds. Because a lot of times at the gym, you have the... You just have this like voice that says like, oh, like you need to keep pushing, you need to do more and heavier, blah, 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 blah. But uh, to be able to listen to my body and know that, okay, we just need to take like a few days or like a week off or go easy. And then when you come back to the gym or back to the regular routine rates in a week's time, your performance will improve. So Whenever I do these D-Low weeks, I really take advantage of it. It's not like I pick out on junk food and I just like sit on the couch or whatever. This D-Load, probably for the next week or so, I'm just going to do some spring cleaning around the house, do some housework. I need to change up some air filters. I need to go through my closet and clear out, uh, clear it out. Actually, I need to paint my closet um, for weird reasons I won't go into. Take out some clothes and shoes for, na- for, uh, for donation, things like that. But anyways, uh, today I'm going to kick it off again with another cruise-related topic, some cruise advice. So this is some news, actually. I just recently heard that pretty much all of the 2024 Atlantis cruises that are scheduled for this year, they're all pretty much sold out. So the October cruise, just uh, they just sent an email out yesterday, I think. That's completely sold out. Uh, they had the original three European cruises, which is the, uh, in the Mediterranean, they had the July cruise on the Oceana, which is more like a luxury cruise. That sold out, I think, pretty quick. And then they had the two back-to-back cruises in August, um, the 10-day cruises that were back-to-back on Virgin in August, and those sold out quite quickly as well. Then earlier this year, they added a fourth Mediterranean cruise in Europe on another Virgin cruise. Uh, I haven't double-checked that one, so don't quote me, but I believe that's also sold out now or, like, very close to it. And then the, uh, there's a cruise sailing this coming weekend uh, out of the uh, uh, Caribbean uh, on a Virgin cruise ship, and that was sold out for a while. So those are all the cruises basically coming up this year. Uh, and they're pretty much all sold out, uh, is what I've heard. And there hasn't been that many, uh, that much news about the 2025 cruises. But uh, what I thought I would talk about today, since pretty much everything is sold out, is how you would get yourself onto one of these sold out cruises if you were wanting to go on one of these cruises. Um, but now that you hear that they're sold out, you're like, oh, that means I can't go anymore. That is not true. So I'll take you guys to like a couple of tips uh, and advice for how do you can still get on one of these cruises that have been sold out. So uh, I think I explained this one time before. Uh, a lot of these cruises, they go on sale 9, 10, 11, even a full year uh, ahead of when they actually set sale. 
So uh, Alantis has been kind of selling these for many, many months. And there are definitely a lot of people, a lot of boys that will kind of jump on that opportunity to book a cruise that's nine to 12 months away. So a lot of can happen in nine to 12 months. Life happens. Maybe uh, you have a new job. Maybe you are getting married and you move to like a different city, different country, whatever. Life happens. Because of these things, uh, a lot of people... Well, not a lot, but a good amount of people that have booked a cruise vacation nine or 12 months in advance, as they get closer to the date of the cruise, because life happens, they decide not to go on the cruise. or They, they, they find out that they can't go on the cruise anymore for whatever reason. And then they'll be looking for some way to basically cancel their reservation or to get rid of it. Usually, if you just call up Atlantis or your travel agency, it really depends there's no like flat, just like uh, you just get your money back in cash policy. As far as I remember with Atlantis, usually under most circumstances, uh, you would get uh, future cruise credit back. So let's say you and your partner plunk down $4,000 total between the two of you on a cabin on a upcoming cruise and you guys don't want to go anymore. So usually you're not going to get your money back refund it back in cash or back to your credit card or whatever. Usually, uh, you would get uh, cruise credits for a future cruise. It's kind of similar to if you booked a flight with an airline, at least here in the US. You know, you spent $500 on some flight with United or American Airlines or Delta or whatever. If you choose to just cancel that flight, usually you don't get your money back. You get future flight credits back. And it's associated with your, you know, United, American, Delta, whatever account that you can use for some future fight uh, later on. So uh, most of the time, there are going to be some exceptions. But by and large, the default is that you're just going to get future cruise credits with Atlantis if you decide to cancel for like whatever reason, like you switch jobs, just for whatever reason you don't want to go anymore. Because of that, some people don't want to have the future cruise credits. They would rather just you know, like offload it to someone else. So that's where on like Facebook groups, for example, is where I see a lot of this. And there's a Facebook group for pretty much every single Atlantis cruise out there. Sometimes there's multiple. It's like a little bit confusing. Uh, But uh, Facebook is definitely a place where there's going to be a Facebook group for every upcoming cruise. And a lot of times on those groups, you browse through them, you see that there are various people selling their cabins. And that's one good way of finding a room or a cabin uh, on a sold out cruise is just to look on some of these groups and see who that already has a existing reservation or looking to give it up. And usually when people sell their rooms, they are pretty forthcoming with, you know, how much they paid for it because, you know, if you're selling something, you need to list the price. Uh, they'll tell you what type of cabin it is. Does it have a balcony? Does it have an ocean view? Is it an interior room? Does it have windows, no windows, whatever it is. Um, So yeah, that's probably the first place I would recommend you start is if there's a cruise coming up um, on a calendar and on Atlantis' website or according to your travel agent, the cruise is technically sold out. You know, when you get a a ship full of gay men, you know, three, four, five thousand of them, some of them are going to flake out. Sometimes a lot of them flake out, right? Um. So yeah, just go on to go into Facebook and find the one or two Facebook groups that have the most followers or members for that particular cruise. Just do a quick search. Um, join those groups and just have a quick browse and see who is selling their rooms. And in my experience, you know, uh, rooms would pop up every so often, but especially as you get quite close to the sale date for that cruise, maybe in like, starting from maybe two or three months before the sale date, that's when uh, the postings for cabins on sale start to pick up a little bit because the closer you get to the cruise, the more people kind of have their near-term plans solidified and the more that they know whether they can or can't go on the cruise, right? So that's where when you're like a couple of months out, you know, people start to post more about wanting to sell their rooms because now they have clarity 
uh, when in the cruise is only one or two months away, whether they can actually go or not, so the people that can't go, they all start posting it. Yeah, so that's a great way uh, to see, you know, what rooms are available. And pretty much every cruise, like there has not been any Atlantis cruise uh, I've kept tabs on where there aren't some significant number of boys trying to sell their cabins at some point before the cruise sets sail. Obviously, you know, the percentages kind of sort of vary. But yeah, if you really want to go on to a soda cruise, it's definitely possible unless the cruise is like a week away. You know, that short notice, that's where it's like a little bit harder. But even still, even for the cruise that uh, it's going to set sail this coming weekend, the uh, Caribbean cruise on the Virgin ship. And I was looking at browsing through the Facebook groups, one of the one of them this past weekend. And yeah, there are, there are still people that are trying to, like several people, actually, that are trying to get rid of the rooms before the uh, manifest close. And I'll get into that in a little bit. So yeah, go there and you'll see uh, more, probably several people selling cabins for whatever cruise you want to go on. So don't despair. If you want to go on the soda cruise, you just need to find someone who's selling their existing reservation. Now, it's important to note that if you do talk to one of these people that are selling their cabins, uh, note that you should not, for your personal safety, transfer money directly to like a random stranger on the internet who's like selling their room. What needs to happen is uh, Atlantis or uh, the travel agent uh, that the reservation uh, has been booked with, they need to actually facilitate the payments and the transfer of the actual names on that reservation or off that cabin. So uh, let's say the people that have the reservation, they book directly with Atlantis. So basically what would happen is Atlantis would uh, need their authorization uh, to transfer the room to your name, you as the potential buyer. And Atlantis will uh, work with you directly uh, to get your personal information and also to charge you like whatever you need to pay to actually take over that room. So like don't PayPal or like Venmo or wire money to a random stranger. It has to go through either Atlantis and they do do this, transfer rooms and stuff and handle the payment. You need to be paying Atlantis directly or if the book, uh, if the room was originally booked with a third party travel agent, then the travel agent can help facilitate that in the same manner. So make sure you don't pay make sure you don't send money to like a random stranger like it needs to go through a travel agency that company or atlantis directly so just keep that in mind as a uh, safety tip when you're dealing with money online um it is quite often i think it's almost always the case that there will be a name change fee that will be charged to change the name on a reservation or a cabin from one name to another from the buyer to the from the seller to the buyer Usually it's like a hundred to like hundred and fifty dollars. You and whoever's selling the room, the buyers and sellers will. You guys can agree on who's going to pay the fee. A lot of the times, especially when the seller gets more desperate because maybe there's only a couple of weeks to the cruise and they really can't go and they really want to get rid of it to kind of in the deal, they you'll usually offer to pay for the name change fee. So. More often than not, uh, the sellers are willing to do that. And if they don't specify or they don't even know about the fee uh, or they don't specify who's going to pay it, um, you can negotiate a little bit to say like, hey, you know, like I want to buy your room, but uh, could you pay for the name change fee? Hopefully they are aware of what the name change fee is and like they, you know, yeah, and they're willing to pay for it. Usually sellers end up paying for the fee, but usually it turns out that there are more sellers wanting to offload their rooms than buyers that want to actually take over their room. And especially, again, the closer we get to the sale date for the cruise, the more desperate people becomes and the more motivated the sellers are to want to get rid of the room. I've seen times where people will offer a discount where they'll just take like a slight loss on the room because they would rather get some of their money back, like 80 or 90% of their money back, uh, rather than just not getting any of their money back. Um, and it's possible when you book a room, and it's possible that, you know, uh, because of the refund policy that is in place, you know, if you don't want to just be stuck with future cruise credits, to actually get 
actual cash back usually requires to have in place already travel insurance that covers cruises and also covers explicitly the reason for why you want a refund. Travel insurance is like a whole other can of worms. Maybe I'll talk about it one day in the future, even though I'm not like the utmost expert in travel insurance, but I know enough in terms of how it applies to just travel in general as a consumer. Most people end up not getting the travel insurance, but um, assuming you don't have the travel insurance in place that would cover the reason you would want to get a full cash refund for your cruise um, and you don't want to get the cruise credit back, then your real, only real feasible option is to sell the room. So there are times where people are quite motivated and um, they'll even listen to their posting in the Facebook group that, oh, we'll take like $200 off or whatever and we'll pay for the name change fee just to sweeten the deal, especially if there are clearly more people selling the room than there are people wanting to buy the room. So yeah, that's probably the main way I would go about trying to get on a cruise that is quote unquote sold out. Uh, there are always people looking to sell their rooms, even up to like a week before on the vast majority of cruises. So there is kind of sort of another way. Sometimes Atlantis will have a wait list for certain sold out cruises uh, but the thing is, for them to actually start, for them to have ability uh, availability to process the wait list and actually have rooms available for people on that wait list requires others to free up the room. And most cruisers, I feel like most cruisers have a reservation they want to get rid of. They tend to want to sell the room to someone else for the reasons I mentioned before so that they can get the money back. Uh, there are people where they're repeat cruisers, uh, where they know that if they just had the future cruise credit there, they will use it for sure in probably the not too distant future. Like I would probably be one of those. If I really had to cancel Atlantis cruise for some reason, I wouldn't be super heartbroken to just have future cruise credits instead of getting the cash back because I am very likely to go on and other Atlantis cruise sooner rather than later. So having a credit there is really not like a huge deal. But for a lot of people, they don't go on cruises that often. They don't go on vacation that often. They don't really know if they can take advantage of the cruise credits in the future. They would much rather have the money back. So they, in, in the vast majority of cases, people tend to just want to want that full refund. So that means they don't actually give the room back to Atlantis. Therefore, Atlantis doesn't usually have tons of availability or rooms kind of freed up to them to actually give to people on the wait list. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, if you want to go on a soda cruise, I would say chances are very good that you will be able to. Um, expect, yeah, just go on the Facebook, go to the Facebook groups for that cruise, have a look around. There's always people selling cabins. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's a little cruise tip and advice for today. I've been thinking about, I can probably actually do cruise slash like some gay party related uh, topics enough to sustain a podcast on those topics every single week of the year. So the way I started this podcast um, was just for me to literally ramble and rant and talk about anything I want. Not, spe not specific to cruises or parties or anything like that. That's how my Just Joey T YouTube channel started. But I the way the channel has evolved, I know the vast majority of you are here for the cruise-related stories, advice, whatever, uh, the, the gay party advice, stories, also that kind of stuff. And I'm starting to move over to TikTok now. So, oh, I finally got my TikTok off the ground. It's on my uh, other username, the Kian Right X. The Kian username isn't completely random. It was. It's kind of sort of based on a, a nickname that I had as a kid, like in like Chinese. It was like it's very roughly translated to Kian, like that other uh, username that I have. And the Just Joey T username, it's like. So it started like eight or 10 years ago. It was just my personal username on the internet when, you know, like uh, when Instagram first started and like the YouTube, all that stuff, it was just like the username I picked. But it's evolved over time. It's now associated with all the cruise and party content that I put out over the years. And I'm fine with that. So in terms of 
the YouTube channel or any kind of content that I make uh, that's like associated with those accounts, I think I'd rather just keep it all like cruise party related. So, and then with the uh, with the Kian uh, handle, and now I I just posted. I'm starting to post a TikTok on Instagram and also YouTube Shorts uh, with the Kian handle. So go follow it. I just started this week. Started posting. I had all the accounts, all the usernames reserved. I just started posting this week, and with the Kian handle, I think that's where I can really just focus that on me. So I'm gonna start vlogging there. I'm just gonna make videos just for fun so I posted one video where I was trying to slice up a mango and I was doing it all wrong I posted uh, another video a couple of days ago um, of me just showing like what my what I eat and drink before I go to the gym and I just uploaded the video literally just now before I started recording of me doing like my song of the day I, I want to do this little like song of the day like lip sync type thing just to sh- kind of like showcase the type of music that I listen to. I enjoy the act of singing, but I sound horrible. Like no one should ever, ever hear me sing. It is like torture. Like people will be like, oh my God, take me to the dentist for a root canal so that we can shut this guy up. Make him not sing. Yeah, so I'm going to do it in the form of a lip sync. Uh, but, but I, yeah, I, I would love to just share like the, the songs that I listen to, the music that I listen to. So... Yeah, so with the key and handle, uh, I that's where I want to do all that, which kind of frees up uh, this podcast in a way to focus solely on cruise and party content. And I have like several of you through various channels um, asked to say, "Oh, are there any like juicy stories I can I can share about any of the parties cruises that I've been on?" Uh, I always see people uh, on like the, those Facebook groups I mentioned asking various cruise related questions. And every time I read one of those, I'm like, I know the answer to that. I know the answer to that. I know the answer to that. So I would just love to be able to do like that type of a thing. I would love to do some interviews uh, with some of like my party and cruise friends. And I think if I just focus the podcast purely on the parties and cruises, keep it really lightweight though. I think to sustain a podcast once a week for a whole year, I think it'd be fun to do like 15 to 20 minute tiny little podcast. So the 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 advice, the cruise advice segment for this episode was 20 minutes. And I think that's like a good length. I would love to interview or just be able to like chit chat with some of my party friends, my cruise friends, um, just so we can get, you know, like their experience and their advice as well. So it's something I'm thinking about. I would have to drop the name of this podcast though. So if I made this podcast just like cruise and parties and stuff, it would probably have like maybe a boring name. It wouldn't be called He's Hopping Something's Off. That, oh, I hate naming things. It took me so long to find a name for this podcast. And that was something that I, well, my friend Jeremy just randomly said it in the group chat. And I was like, oh, that could be the name of the podcast. Oh, but uh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I'll see. But yeah, what should I name the podcast if it's just going to be cruise content? I think I have to start over. I don't want to use this name. So I have to like start start over again. We'll start from episode one all over again. And then there would just be cruise and party content, stories, advice, what have you. So yeah, that means I have to name another thing. Oh my God, that's so much work. Okay, but we have some advice. It was some suggestions for what I should name the podcast if I rebooted it to just be cruise and party related content. Comment on the YouTube channel below. Also, if y'all have any questions or any type of advice that you want. I really like the um, well, the advice that I tried to give last time. I was at a, a friend's house a couple of days ago and they're a couple. They are in an open relationship and they've been on several of the cruises. And I just told them, oh yeah, when, uh, someone that listened to my podcast asked for advice and this was their situation. Like they were in an open relationship. <laughs> and then they, they were like, what do you know about relationships and what do you know about how how couples should uh what couples should do on a cruise i'm like yeah i know i had to give them a disclaimer at the beginning uh of answering that question that to say that i've only been ever been single while i was on a cruise so but yeah i think it's really fun to take questions or have y'all just 
ask me uh, questions or for advice uh, to give on the podcast. So, yeah, maybe I'll focus the podcast more on cruises and parties in the future. But for right now, we just keep on keeping on. So until next time, bye.